recording anyway but yeah he's been he's been real supportive of me but um where was I going with my thought about that with the oh yeah he doesn't uh edit his podcasts and so I was gotcha. like yeah I don't think I'm not gonna do this the other thing okay one of my cats is <laughs> I don't know if you saw a butt there right now but yeah he he may decide to start wandering across my you know laptop I've heard you talk about them when you've recorded before yeah they <laughs> Yeah, they sometimes just do things, uh, especially that one, because he's sort of a ham. But anyway, um, what was the other thing I was going to tell you? Um, brain is not, oh, I know. Yeah, the other weird thing about Zoom that I've discovered in the last several interviews that I've done is I may do a thing like this. Let's see if it does it. No, it didn't. It, there's like some sort of thing like where you gesture and then all of a sudden you'll see a thumbs up sign. It's not. Oh. Yeah, and it, it just, just like, it picks it something up on the screen. does something, yeah. And I, and I tend to gesticulate. I'm trying to set it off and it's not doing yeah. nothing. Ah, anyway, <laughs> I guess it'll be okay. Anyway, Steve Carter, so happy to I'm have here. you. I'm here. Yay. I know you're like my first Band of Runners person out, you know, since band camp. And I, I told Liza when I saw her um, a couple weeks ago at Bandera, I'm like, I'm still editing the video. It's not that I've forgotten. It's just... It, it got a little more complicated or I think I'm <laughs> making it more complicated than I should have. Um, and, and I should know better, but anyway, yeah, it, that, that I'm sure you captured a lot of footage and there's a lot going on that weekend while we're out there. Uh, yeah. And, and it's also sometimes things are out of context or you're not really sure what you're looking at or I don't. Yeah. So I, you know, I see you have to kind of shoot cover what they call cover shots. So it, like to help tell the story or, you know, make it move along or whatever. And, and for sure. Sometimes I didn't do that. But anyway, uh, so uh well, welcome. Hello. Uh thank you. <laughs> I know you hello. and I have you and I have talked a little bit before, uh like on you know, Messenger and whatnot. Uh I know you were well, I think I first became aware of you when uh you had crewed for um Kenneth. Yes. Yeah, you and Roel. And you know, it was so funny. I just figured this out uh, I don't know, about a month or so ago that Roel at the camp was that Roel. <laughs> yes, so we were I, both there. I know, I know. And we need to get Kenneth to show up for that just to be some sort of inspirational person, I guess. But yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, he's he's amazing. God, I saw him come through at Bandera and I was just like, holy crap, this guy's fast. <laughs> I just had lunch with Roel today and um all of us will be out at Rocky this weekend. Oh, cool. For, Ken's running the hundred miler. He... I'm gonna pace and crew for another friend of ours. Yeah. And uh yeah, it's gonna be a a wild party. weekend. I know. I'm, I'm gonna have, uh, have the FOMO thing going on. Fear of missing out, but I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm here this weekend, but uh, anyway. Well, good luck. Uh, you know, with all that. I know Kate's gonna be out there too. She's not running, yep. but she's crewing or doing something out there, or aid stationing or know. volunteering for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm actually running the 50 miler next weekend. Oh, oh so cool. I'll be I'll be out there both weekends. That's glad you're you're a glutton yep. for punishment. I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure am. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I love Rocky. Um, Yeah, the last time I did it, I did the 50K. It was two years ago, and it was on my birthday. And I just thought, hey, what better way to celebrate my birthday than doing a 50K, you know? And That's pretty good. Oh, my God. It was it was kind of bad, though, because uh, it, it got really cold. You know, front came through, and um, and I wanted to quit after the first loop. And um, Becky Spalding, she's like, why do you want to quit? And I'm like, I don't know. I she's checking you out. Are you hurt? Are you injured? I said, I just kind of ache. I hurt. And she's like, that's a stupid reason. I'm like, okay, you're right. Yep. So I just went and changed my clothes, got something to eat, used the bathroom, and then got back out there and finished. <laughs> yep. Well, I kept thinking, what are you going to do? You know, because I, mean, I had a hotel for the night. And so I, I kept thinking, what are you going to do? Go back to your hotel and like watch movies or something? That's embarrassing. You know, so yeah, don't do that. You would have had regrets. Yeah, exactly. 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 I know. My brain sometimes yes. gets broken. I I did finish the 100 miler last year. Did you? Um, Congrats. So I I had paced before, and uh, I'm very familiar with the course. I'd actually actually uh, cleared the course a couple of years ago, 2020. Oh. I think I tore down the course at the end of the 50 oh. miler weekend. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, and then I paced in 2021, Ooh. and then I ran the 100 myself in 2023. When you did the so, pacing, was that on the um, the first weekend or the second? It was on the first weekend. It was for the 100 miler. Okay. Yeah, because. 
the second weekend was right before that giant <laughs> the freeze of death came through oh yes it was you're right and, yeah i was just talking to kate about that because i had a friend of mine we we did the half marathon that day and um and i'm just like okay okay we gotta hurry up we gotta get we gotta get home you know <laughs> right we knew this front of doom and then you know chris and jonathan and pj are all just kind of like eh, you know because <laughs> they th i think they ended up just like leaving everything and just coming back and getting it the following week you know because it was crazy but anyway god yeah. enough about that all you know i know sometimes this turns into just sort of a chat which is fine um so first of all tell me uh about yourself are you from san antonio i know you're 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 retired military is that correct retired air force yeah um air no force. we got stationed in san antonio in 2013 at the very end of 2013 okay uh and that's kind of i found I, we moved here from Washington, D.C. after being there for about eight and a half years, uh -huh. and uh, I wasn't quite ready to leave, but the military thought otherwise, so that was our next assignment, moving to Texas, and uh, we, lo we lost a lot of community when we moved, so I was uh, kind of battling, you know, looking for friends, looking for community, and uh, I started running and found the running community in San Antonio, and that's really what uh, keeps us here, a lot of it. And uh, and what made me fall in love with San Antonio. Yeah. So born and raised in Michigan, joined the military, moved around, but Michigan. found myself. Yep. What part of Michigan? Just north of Van Arbor, small town called Pinckney. Pinckney. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, my sister and I've gone up there a couple of times. They go to um, Glen Lake. Okay. Does that make any sense? I'm not sense? familiar. Okay. No. It, it's it's. Yeah, it's on it's on Lake Michigan, of course. And it's yeah, I think we have to go through Ann Arbor to get there. It's it's on yeah, it's north. But anyway, it's beautiful up there. Gotcha. So. Yep. Um, so very I cool. don't go back too much. Uh, my mom retired and moved down to San Antonio. So oh, she's good. my closest family. I have a sister that lives in South Carolina. Okay. And then, you know, that's it. So uh with mom being local kind of helps us out she she helps with the kids while i'm out gallivanting and doing events and my, always... wife, my wife is still working full-time so okay what does she do she's still in the air force okay oh, okay so she's there she force has too. about 11 or 12 months left on active duty she's probably got about two months of solid work that she'll be doing great and then before you... she's done so are, and you guys are staying that i take it yeah i think we're you know we'll be in we'll be in san antonio indefinitely i hope yeah at least uh till the kids get through college and or high school and then into college yeah and how many kids two uh my daughter alexis is 14 and my son roman turns 12 tomorrow <gasps> oh yep. he's a little aquarius like me yay <laughs> yep <laughs> i know it's such a dork yeah you're you, well you talking about running rocky on your birthday made me realize that your birthday's coming up like either next week or the week after a couple of weeks that's yeah, the 12th so yeah. yeah it's yeah it's lincoln's birthday you know inconveniently located next to uh valentine's day which you know, <laughs> if, if you want to go out for dinner forget it you know <laughs> it's like, right anyway well that's really cool um yeah and you want to get your kids through high school and, and whatnot so that makes sense so yeah uh, we only actually anticipated being in san antonio for four years but really? the way that my career ended up working out at the end and and the way my wife's career went i mean we, we've now been here for 10 years so yeah, it's right it's yeah. pretty awesome it is yeah. uh yeah I, I, uh, what part of town do you all live in we're on the west side of san antonio over by SeaWorld. Oh, okay. I always love it when people say they live out by SeaWorld. I don't know why, but I, I picture dolphins jumping in people's backyards, like in the background or something. It's such a yeah. It gets, I mean, you know, opening weekend, the highways get pretty crowded in this area, but yeah. other than that, you don't, you don't ever notice it. Well, and you're also pretty close to some pretty awesome running. And I noticed that you do a lot of biking too. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a nice nice part of town. i yeah. ride the bike in in Holotus a good bit which okay. is yeah that's you know too. good and hilly um yeah. i train at government canyon a lot okay yeah. uh whether it's mountain bike or trail running yeah i've seen so. people are on mountain bikes and i'm like and especially like on some of that really gnarly backcountry stuff and i'm just like yes Whoa, how do you do that <laughs> <laughs> i have another group that actually we do it in the dark sometimes Oh my God. During the, during the summertime, it's much cooler to go after the sun goes down. So sure. we'll go in the dark in the summer. I think you and Kenneth and and maybe Roel, I don't know, but I, it seems like one day we were out, because I run with the, um, 
San Antonio off-road runners. And sometimes okay. we'll, we'll do our, our training runs out there. And I just happened to see all these mountain bikers go by kind of zooming past us. And then I noticed on Strava that I think you and Kenneth had been out there. And I'm like, oh, those maybe are so. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I, I like that place. It's, I it's, think I joined the off-road runners at least once. Um, maybe it was, it wasn't last year. It might've been the year before. Uh, Kimberly. For, for a training run out there at Government Canyon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with Kim, with Kimberly. Of course. Yeah. Everyone loves her. Yeah. She's like, oh, the yeah. ambassador. you know, she's, yeah, it's, yeah, I like it out. I like that place. I mean, my, when I lived in the Rio Grande Valley, um, we used to, um, you know, when people would come up to San Antonio, they talk about Government Canyon and I'd be like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when I moved up here, you know, I, it, that's the great thing about living in San Antonio is that compared to say the Valley is that every weekend you could run or bike or whatever at a different park and not repeat it, you know? Sure. And, and, and there's also groups of people that are doing that yes. almost every weekend, right? It's, so it's, if you're looking for the accountability, you're looking for that community that I mentioned earlier that that I was significantly lacking when when we moved here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's available for those who are seeking that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took me a little while because, again, in the Valley, uh, it's a very tight knit community because they're so well at the time it was I moved there, what, in 2004, I guess. And so it um, I mean, 5Ks were sort of a new thing down there. And then it just seemed like all of a sudden there's like a 5k every weekend and sometimes multiple ones, which I know sounds yeah. funny to, you know, to us, but, but we really only had like a handful of places we could run together. And so we all just sort of bonded and, you know, did lots of group runs and I really miss that, excuse me, camaraderie, but I do like the uh, off-road runners group. Um, even though I haven't been running with them. I, I'm going to run with them this weekend. I promise. But anyway, <laughs> woo. so, so you said you started running once you moved here then? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I had tried it a couple of times when we lived in Washington, D.C., but I never did quite fall in love with it. Right. It never became something that was going to be part of my lifestyle. It was always just, oh, I'm going to try this and see if, you know, see if it works out, see if it, if I find any benefit from it. But I never really did up there. Yeah. And uh, and here just I think it was more of the community than it was even the running but it was just that people were so cool and accepting and, you know, there's so much out there here in, in San Antonio for, you know, being, feeling welcome that that's what happened. And and I just stuck with it at that point. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really cool. So, um, so were you, a, uh, did you start out on roads or did you start out on trail or was it a combination? Pretty much started out on road uh, for the longest time, 24 no, it was 2015. I decided I wanted to run a half marathon a month. This was uh marathon or, you know, the marathon maniacs and the half fanatics. Mm -hmm. And one of their, one of the half fanatics qualifiers was uh, a half marathon a month for, for 12 months. I think, you know, they have several different levels that you can get to within that organization. Uh, I was still a little timid of the full marathon distance. Yeah. So I just stuck to the half marathons in 2014 and decided I would run multiples one one a month was the goal uh mm -hmm. i want to i'm sorry that was 2015 and oh. i wound up taking a stress fracture by december um from running way too much on on paved services and probably some pretty poor form at that yeah. so yeah i got injured oh. and uh oh, that's when i picked up the bike basically yeah well that's that's super cool i mean yeah i mean it's not cool that you got injured but you know, it's funny because when i was talking to kate this morning she was telling me about like breaking things you know and having to, like, yeah you know injuries <laughs> happen in this sport right oh well, they sure do and i mean yeah and i've been on the disabled list you know for almost a year i mean i'm just kind of getting back at it but you know when i found out i had arthritis in my hip um that's just not fun you know and it's it, it oh, just yeah flares up you know and it's weird it's like i don't really think of myself as an old person so it's like, well you know i mean you're not you're not gonna gravitate toward going out and doing it if it's painful right right it's not gonna be something that you enjoy doing if every time you do it, it hurts. Hurt yourself yeah right so, I mean, it's it's yeah and so i mean you know and I've, I've dealt with plantar and you know other dopey injuries and things like that you know but, mm -hmm. you, but i'm hoping that but I, I talked to a guy one time who had no cartilage between his knees and still goes out and does Bandera. And I'm just like, 
put on your big girl pants and <laughs> right. Well, there's a there's a, a world of different injuries, you know, or different conditions that that we all battle through. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. But so so you got a stress fracture. And so did you finish that half uh, marathon a month thing or no, that... I only did 11. I wound up only oh, only completing 11. So yep. close. Okay. It was. God. I. But well, how far you've come. So when did the trail running scene start beckoning to you? Uh, I, I So I, I wound up getting stationed in South Korea in 2016. So after that stress fracture, I, I kind of rehab on my way to Korea. And then when I got over there, I was still in a walking boot by that point in March. Uh, the injury really happened early December, but by March I was still, you know, working to heal my stress fracture. Yeah. And uh, when I got to Korea, I had to really take it easy with the running. And so I think I waited until about May when I really started, you know, upping the mileage and 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 getting out on the run again. But in the meantime, I had a bicycle. And so I just rode the bicycle everywhere I could. And I still did that in South Korea. Yeah. Um, I started running trails while I was over there. And I mean, I had done a little bit of trails here in San Antonio, you know, McAllister or something like that. I'd done like the Chupacabra race. Oh, yeah. B before I went over to Korea. Um, but nothing, you know, nothing in the ultra distance world. Uh, and when I came back from Korea in 2017, I think I'm not, I can't really remember if I ran another marathon between then or not, but I did, uh, sign up for my first 50 K, which was Bandera in 2018. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So that was all upon, um, my return from Korea. Yeah. I tell this story a lot, but when, uh, Roel was on the start line with me, he was doing the, the hundred K that day in 2018 and uh, he looked down at my my trail running shoes and they were pretty clean. Um, I'd done a good bit of trails with them, but whether I'd washed them or maybe I ran through some water and they were they were looking like they weren't trail runner shoes. Right. They're looking like they'd never seen the trail before. And he had asked me that morning before we started the run if I ever ran trails. So it was it was an awakening experience, though, being that it was Bandera. And, uh, you know, those are quite That's technical crazy... trails. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my Lord. For a first 50 K. Right. Um, was also my first hundred K in 2021. Oh, so, okay. Yep. Wow. You and Kate, she, well, she just jumped right over to the hundred K. The hundred K. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's a little kooky. Um, so how did that 50 K feel? Um, it was, it was okay. I was, I was pretty slow. Uh, I, I didn't quite know what I was getting into. I never, I never even really perfected the marathon distance before jumping to that 50 K. So, you know, the, a lot of people say, yeah, it's just five more miles, but well, one on that technical terrain and two, just, you know, <laughs> taking that on in and of itself. So yeah, it was, that was a pretty slow 50 K. Um, what was your finishing time? Oh, uh, that year was eight fifteen. I would kill for that time. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think uh both times I've done it, it's been like about 10 hours. <laughs> nice. I got a few years on you though. So <laughs> but anyway. Well, I went back to I, so I went back to run it again in 20 uh, to run the 50k. So I'd done the 20, I'd done the 25k in between, then I'd paced. Uh, I ran the the hundred K in 2021. So 2022, I went to go try and better my 50k time. Mm -hmm. And uh I want to having a diverticulitis flare up while I was out there, which I didn't even know I had diverticulitis at the oh. time, but I was in gut wrenching pain and I landed myself in the hospital the, the weekend at, or the, the Monday after Bandera, I stayed out there, um, but I chose not to run, which was probably the good move. Right. Oh, okay. So, um, so I never, I never did get to, to go after that 50 K improvement time until this year, um, just yeah. this past January. Yeah. I finally got to run the 50 K again. Yeah. 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 So. How did that go? Uh, the goal was six hours and I came in at six hours and one minute. So, uh, That's I wasn't pretty good. That's I wasn't upset with myself, but I had to have a little bit of grace on the, you know, fact that I just missed the goal. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, that's amazing though. That's, you know, yeah. And yeah. then I, I was talking to Kyle and he, um, he said that you did, you were going to do the 25 K, I guess the following day. I did do this 25 K the following day. Yes. How did that go? How did you, uh, the first couple of miles were pretty rough and then things just started flowing and I was really on pace at the exact same that I was the day before I wound up running the 25 K in three hours. 
So Whoa. it was it was very steady paced uh, the entire weekend. Now, do I think I could do another 25K and, you know, get a, a 12 hour 50 or a 12 hour 100K out there? Probably not. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> heck. I mean, my the 100K that I ran out there, the first one was 15 hours and 20 minutes. That's so, cool. yeah, to try and perfect that distance, too. You know, there's just you're, you're always learning when we're doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Whether you're doing a partial distance of of a larger race or you're doing the entire distance, right? There's mm -hmm. just there's so much learning that takes place. Right. Well, I know you and I you and I had this semi debate uh, through Messenger about uh, road v trail, and you were uh, you come down on the side of I want to hear your opinion on this, so that's why you know. Oh yeah. Well, I, what, I it, was about the, it was about the the trash on the trails, right? Or oh, just the yeah. the the road runners migrating to the trail running. Right. And, uh, I, I think, I, I, I mean, you've heard it before, but a lot of people are blaming road runners for the abundance of debris and trash on the trail. And, uh, I, I like to think that it's just simply accidental more than it is road runners being completely disrespectful of, of the trailer for us to point the finger at road runners and say, they're the problem. Like, why are they here? I, I just, I mean, I love trails so much. I wish I would have found them sooner. And uh, yeah, I hope that road runners migrate to the trails more, but can also not be uh, the target of Higher. trail runners saying, yeah, this is your fault that there's trash everywhere. You know, I don't know why it's out there. Um, when we all see it, we can just all do our part to maybe try and pick a piece up when we see it uh, and bring it to the next aid station. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my theory about that was, and, and I see what you're saying and I agree with that. Um, sorry. Um, but I guess, I guess what I've seen is that, um, people, um, are first time trail runners. God, what is going on here? Uh, yeah. First time trail runners. And then they, they don't know any better. And so they're used to being able to throw their cups or whatever, you know? And so I guess that's where that assumption came from. <laughs> Maybe so. Well, and you know, yeah, they might throw their cups or they might drop like sometimes they'll do mm -hmm. a cup of ramen for an ultra or, you know, you'll get something in a cup as you leave the aid station and they may drop it by the end of the aid station. But I mean, sometimes we're seeing these miles after an aid station. Right. And at that point, it's like, just hang on to it and throw it away at the next one. You don't have a trash pocket like there should be something, some kind of care or concern. I know. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I think once people catch on to that, then they, they're, you know, they get it, you know, but I think, right. I think sometimes in the culture, it's just, and I forget which race it was that I noticed this at, but I just, I, cause I heard a lot of people saying that they were doing their first trail run and things like that. And so, um, and, and so I was kind of picking up on that vibe, but you know, mm -hmm. good or bad, but I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, we're, we're ambassadors to the sport. And so it's just, we got to educate them and, and, make them aware you know that you know we we clean up after ourselves and uh you know just yeah a trash pocket that's always good you know right maybe i should sell something like that no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um, i know a lot of times when i'm pacing um because when you're pacing it's a lot slower pace right you're normally toward the end of the race and and you're pretty fresh so your right. your legs are ready to yeah. do a lot more than than the runner that your pacing normally is. And so when I'm behind them and I see a piece of trash, I'll stop and, you know, pick it up and bring it to the next aid station because I'm not racing. Um, there is a little bit of a difference there. Right. And I can play catch up if they, if they move on hasty, hastily and I'm still picking up trash, but it's really, it's a quick thing to do to just bend over and pick it up. If you see it on the trail. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Let me do something real fast here. Cause I'm, Oh, excuse me. My God. Oh, thanks. God, the cedar pollen is just killing me right now. And I just got rid of my work email because I just got, <laughs> got rid of Kate. Yeah, Kate and I had to do that earlier today, too. It's like, you know, you can always count on Outlook to just go, you know, but anyway. Yeah, popping up with stuff for you. Yeah, it's like, leave me alone. But anyway, um, it seemed like there's one other thing that we were going to talk about, too. Uh, yeah, I couldn't remember what that topic. I I knew I remembered this one. Yeah, yeah but I can't was, remember what the other well, one. Well, if we think about it, you know, or if you think about it later, just let me know. We can. Sure. I, can I can talk about it in my uh, intro or something. Yeah. Just, 
offhand. I'm like, oh, oh. so, um, and, and you've gotten into this page. I know you've, again, you, you crewed for, um, Kenneth, how did you guys meet? Uh, that was right after I got back from Korea. I'd kind of seen some things that he was doing while I was over there and took a liking to him. And I was like, Hey, I'd, you know, like to be able to help this guy out if I can. And, uh, so I, we, we kind of connected after I got back from Korea, but we weren't super duper close. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we probably got a lot more close post COVID, mm -hmm. uh, and just, you know, certain run events together. And, uh, I had gotten, I'd gotten sober in 2019. So right before COVID. Okay. And, uh, and so Ken and I had that common ground there too. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of something that we connected on. And then, you know, when he was raising money and doing his run and, uh, the beneficiary was the pay it forward organization, which was something I could get behind, um, you know, being Great in the sober word. community, that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's yep. super cool. So how was, you know, and, you know, I don't want to rehash too much of that, but, um, you know, had you ever crewed, I mean, obviously this is like everybody. Yeah, I had crewed, I crewed Leadville. I crewed um, the Bear 100 up in, in Utah. Oh, for him? Um, I have crewed a couple other races uh, for some band of runners friends and then another friend who runs locally. Um, I had helped her with Rocky, so crewed and paced. So, yeah, I mean, I'd seen a little bit of it. Uh, I'd helped Ken out here and there, but nothing to the to the depth of what we were taking on by running across Texas. Yeah, that's that's ambitious. So uh, how much planning did that take, um, you know, in, in terms of just sort of getting him situated or I don't know, I, I, I have no. Yeah, I, <laughs> a lot of it was learning on the fly. Um, Roel had a comment where he said, you know, it was the first time any of us ever had a sleepover together. And so we, <laughs> we really, you know, you had three grown males, uh, going on the road together. And so we really did learn a lot and, and we were pretty flexible with learning, learning as we went. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, there's some things that don't change, but you know, we, we knew that we we're going to be doing the recovery portion of it and making sure that he was good to go for the next day. So yeah, there, there are certain things that don't change from it, but day in and day out, a lot did change. Yeah. So so what was the biggest challenge do you think was it just you know making sure that you know he he got his rest he ate you know mentally was in the zone um what kind of yeah i think keeping him in the zone mentally was was a lot of it um food at night after we got settled in that was always kind of a challenge um we had a lot of food with us so we we cooked it all um my biggest concern i think in the beginning was his safety Mm, um, yes. because okay. there have been people that have lost their lives doing what we did. Uh, so I was most concerned about Ken's safety and just, I, I thought I'd have eyes on him all the time. Uh, but we wound up, you know, driving the RV up and kind of leapfrogging him as he ran. Yeah. So there were, there were moments where we, we didn't see him. And then, you know, he'd come up over the hill over the horizon and you, you, okay, there he is. And so we'd get ready and, you know, offer to whatever he needed for the next stop which wasn't really a stop. Sometimes it would just, he'd just run by and take whatever we offered and keep on going. Yeah. Um, but every day we took a lunch break and then every, he pushed through after lunch and, you know, another several hours. And then we just pick a stopping point each day just on how he was feeling. Yeah. And, uh, and I think he's, isn't he like the first person to have done this? Uh, he's not the, the first, fast. but he's the fastest. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. I, yeah. I knew there was, something <laughs> because um i still want to talk to phil parsons because i know he has that FK, oh yeah you know, for um phil did the notches trace 444 yeah, miles i couldn't think yep. of the name of it off the top of my head yeah we've been kind of like ships in the night but um so how did that uh oh sorry all of a sudden there's a noise out <laughs> i don't know what that was i'm like Ugh. anyway um i keep my front door open and i have a screen door and so just for my cats <laughs> gotcha but they're not even looking out so i don't know why i'm doing this but anyway um but it's air um what do you think the um the best part about that experience was i think knowing the, that we had an impact mm -hmm. i think that was the best the best part about that experience is you know we we went into it not quite knowing what it was going to look like in the end, but 
yeah, I mean, we definitely had an impact. And I think that was the coolest part. We raised over $50,000. Uh, we were able to, you know, change lives through the pay it forward organization. Yeah. And that just, that kept me going when, I mean, I talk about it in the documentary of, you know, when I wanted to quit, when my wife was like, you can't, you can't quit now. And I was just like, I'm ready to be done. Like, this is pretty taxing. I mean, it's, you know, we were 19 days overall, but we were probably on the road for 24, 25 days. Yeah. And, uh, you know, away from the family. I didn't, I didn't, I just talked to him on the phone. So knowing that it did have an impact kept me going. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that was, it didn't take that long, but it's, that's still amazing. <laughs> Nin 19 days total 19 was the days, run. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, all right. Very cool. So do you think you'd ever do anything like this? I don't think that's, no, I don't think I possess the ability to be able to, to do that. In fact, what well, we talked about what I did at Bandera, right? With the, uh, the 50K and the 25K. And I tried uh, back to back stuff uh, just to see what it felt like. But I, I don't know. Never it was okay. <laughs> you never know. You never yeah. know. So, uh, well, I also see that you do a lot of cycling, as you you know earlier mentioned, um, you know, that you, you do cycling. Um, do you have any, how do you balance the cycling and the running or does it, is there a balance or doesn't he, or is it just sort of like you wake up and you go, well, I guess I'll run today or I'll. Run. Yeah. I, I try and keep a pretty good schedule. Uh, right now I was trying to run on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays and mix in the biking, you know, the other days. Uh, the problem is most people know that I like to ride bikes. And so I'll wind up riding on a Tuesday. I'll wind up riding on a Thursday and the run honestly just kind of falls to the back. Uh, I don't honestly don't think I've run since Bandera 25 K. Uh, and I've got a 50 miler next weekend. So oh, right. <laughs> whoops, right. <laughs> You'll be okay. <laughs> yep. you, oh my God. Um, so when you, when you do like these 50 milers or, uh, you know, 50 K or hundred K, um, do you do hiking in between or are you running that thing the whole time? No, there, there's, there's times where I'm, yeah, I'm definitely walking. I, okay. I don't think, I think unless you're winning it, those are the guys that are running the whole way, right? The, the podium finishers, but yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. The rest of us have to find the some mortals. power hike sections. Yeah. I mean, well, yep. yeah. And that always sort of heartens me when I'm out there, you know, slogging away and I see the, the fast guys and they're hiking and I'm like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel better because, you know, it's yeah but that's i just thought that i like was, to say you know sometimes we walk right it just no, happens good. and and i think that's important for people who listen to this podcast to know that because i think sometimes in their heads they think i think one thing they think is that well maybe not just newbies i guess or you know people who are not related to trail running or running right um they they imagine that 100 milers they don't sleep you know or, and and you know it's like well, you know they, they, they sometimes do you know i mean you know, I, I, I talked to Meg Eckert a couple of weeks ago and I mean, she probably slept a little bit when she did that. God, how many miles was that? Coca Dona 250? Well, not that one, but the one before the snowdrop one. Oh, what did she do at snowdrop? I, I don't remember how many miles she ran. I forget too, but it was a lot. I mean, she ran the yeah. lot pretty much. Yeah. But it's just sort of like, and she is still fast, you know, and, right. you know, in a good mood and, just, you know, she's kind of one of those extraordinary, you know, gifted runners, you know, and she didn't really start until not that long ago either. So it's kind of interesting about how that goes. Yeah. I met her for the first time at Leadville. Uh, oh. her, her husband was crewing for her and he was across the way and he and oh, I were nice. sharing yeah. some banter and just chatting. And then yeah. uh, we learned, we learned that we had, you know, some common friends. So that was pretty neat. Yeah, she's they're really lovely. I I like I knew them from the Rock Hoppers uh group um you know, right. that, that I'm involved in. And uh yeah, I remember us out there at um well it used to be called Hippie Hill. It's out in Stone Oak. Um and it used to be this like half mile up, half mile down. I mean the thing is still there, but it used to be half paved, half half trail. And what uh. they do is they would run up four hours and twenty minutes. It's a long story, but anyway, um on 420. And um, whoever got the most miles was some sort of a winner or whatever. But yeah, I met them out there at that. And uh, 
I can only do about 10 miles out there. <laughs> I didn't, I mean, I just kind of, after 10 miles, I was like, okay, I've had enough. This is great. I, I think I've done some hill repeats on that hill. It's yeah. not fun. No, it, but it's, and it's got some pretty good vert to it. I mean, you know, yeah. suburban area, you know, and it's great because you've got restrooms nearby. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh God, I haven't been out there in a long time, but I, I don't like it now that it's paved. So there's that. Yeah, it's um, just the sidewalk right now. Yeah, it's kind of it kind of sucks because it was more fun when you could when you had that combination of things and and you know because you could kind of practice your trail stuff because there's some rocks and things like that and but oh, well, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Um, so what is your what has been your favorite race that you've done? Ooh, I I have I probably have two. Uh, okay. So the Franklin Mountains. 50k was super uh, duper challenging yeah and uh and that's some terrain that you don't even think is possible to run on yeah uh that, that you know you learn a lot from so i like that one um the other the other really cool one i did was the caprock canyons 50k okay uh what, what that was that? That, that's in caprock canyon state park here in texas somewhere between lubbock and amarillo um up north and uh that that was a lot of fun and so what is, yeah, I mean, I'm very partial to the Tejas races. You know, I participate in a lot or all of them. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're, we're so close to home with that. That's, that's the easy stuff. Uh, I like to get out and challenge myself other places too. I actually don't have any belt buckles from outside of the state of Texas yet. So in all the buckles that I've earned for my ultras, they're all, they're all Tejas trails events and all Texas stuff. So eventually I, I know that I need to, branch out and do some ultras elsewhere yeah well maybe the badger <laughs> yeah i have run badger 100k oh you did okay good i so did you yep. oh, but you don't get a buckle for that one you do not get a buckle for that one god come on scott nope. what the heck <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think he i think he would tell you you know uh you know sign up and run the 100 miler it's a cool buckle a very yeah. generous cutoff i know you get like 36 hours or something like that so yep he, yeah, I know. He gave me a complimentary um, entry into that, and I had to defer this year or this past year. And I'm I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it this year though either. So I don't know. It's expensive to travel. That's the problem, you know. I yeah. Mean, it's it's not like you know running in Texas where you can you know maybe camp in your car if you have to you know or something. You know? Right. Uh, it's a challenge. Yeah, or you or you get up the morning of and go to your trail race and drive yeah exactly right i've done that before too yeah There's, but you know the people that live up there have that convenience we just don't come in from texas and when you look at other races here like rocky or bandera people are coming in from all over the country all over the world to, to run it as, as well so yeah. yeah that's i think that's one of the fun things i like about bandera especially volunteering at it um is just meeting all the people who come from all over the place, you know, and absolutely. Just, wow. That's super cool. You know? And, and yeah, there was a guy I met at wild hair. He's from New Zealand originally. And he remembered me from wild hair. <laughs> Sweet. I know. He's like, are you doing the pod? You're the one that does the podcast, <laughs> which cracks nice. me. People approach me at races and they're like, you're the podcast lady or, or, the, <laughs> or they hear my, like I've been in line waiting for packet pickup and they're like, are you Donna? And I'm like, yeah, I recognized your voice. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Well, not really, but you know, it's just kind of entertaining. Um, what was the other thing I wanted? I wanted to ask you a few other things. What's been the hardest race you've ever done? I also like to say that that Franklin Mountains race is probably the hardest. Yeah, yeah I can believe that. that. I've is, never been. That but... one is tough. Yeah, yeah, and and it's just the terrain and 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 whatnot. The then? terrain. Uh, I think it was seven thousand feet of vert for thirty three or thirty five miles, whatever. There, I think it's a fifty four k when they really work out the distance. A little extra something, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! So I I get I'm getting the impression though that your favorite kinds of races excuse me, are um, the ones that involve rocks and hills. Am I correct about that? I mean, I like the challenge in it, right? I, I want it to be a lot of us when we step to the line and toe the line on, on a big event like this, there's always that chance that you're not, that you could potentially not have the greatest day and something could happen and you take the, uh, I, I don't know what the word I want to use for it is, but the dreaded DNF. Right. 
Uh, and, and, and so that's just part of the sport, whether it's a 50 K a 50 miler, a hundred K hundred miler or anything lar longer, larger than that. But these, these are tough challenges. So, yeah, I mean, I like the ones that are going to give me something different in, mm -hmm. in vertical, uh, the Badger was tough because it was a hundred K and it was so far away from home. Yeah. Um, without a pacer. Pretty, but that one's pretty flat, right? It's pretty flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, like which, which has its own challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. cause there's no spot that like we talked about earlier where you're like, yeah, I'm going to walk here. There's, there's not a spot on there where it's like, you know, it's getting a little hilly. I think I'm going to try and power hike this. It doesn't happen. It's right. you, you, you decide to walk at one stretch and then your, your momentum kind of stops a little bit. Yeah. Right. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I've done Brazos 50 miler and, uh, I, I, I have no shame in walking. <laughs> <You know? laughs> flat as a pancake it's just sort of like all right i gotta you know but right but you don't you don't necessarily on those flat as a pancake races you don't hit the top of the hill where you're like okay now i'm gonna jog down or now i've now i've made it to the plateau and this is a runnable stretch and now i'm gonna run again when they're flat and you're walking where's the section that says hey it's time to run again except yeah. in your head right where you're like oh i need to run again or if you're doing intervals i guess that's because yeah sure i, I did that uh, the first time doing intervals, the uh, 30, 30, I met this woman um, and she was um, on the second loop and yeah, she was doing the intervals. And so I hung with her and um, you know, it, it, it kind of worked. It was a little, <laughs> it was a little exhausting because I never really run inter intervals like that before, but yeah, we finished. So that was good. Um, so My favorite interval, I'll run for nine minutes and walk for a minute. Oh, you're tough. <laughs> and that's just, but that's just a way to keep it really, really dialed back at the beginning of a race. Yeah, I can you know, see. Especially when you're wrapped up with everybody else around you oh, and that you have to stick to your plan, right? Yeah. To yeah. Just, just walk for a minute. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. That makes But a lot it's of real sense. easy because when the race starts, you look at the watch with zeros. And when it gets to the nine, you know you're walking. When it gets to the zeros again, you're running. Right. So as long as you can stay on that and, and keep checking the time. Like, mm -hmm. I, I need a little bell or, or a person <laughs> telling me something. Cause yeah, I mean, after a while you start getting kind of loopy and it's like, yeah. oh, I wonder which one I'm on, you know? but that's me. Um, have you ever DNF'd a race? I have DNF'd one race. It was Mule Shoe oh, 30K. Oh, that, that race sucks. <laughs> uh, it was, so I had run the 60 K's for the, the two previous in the series Yeah, yeah. and uh, I was unable to run the fourth one. So I signed up to run mule shoe 30 K. And when I got up there, I ran one loop and I said, man, that's miserable in those woods. And I, I was just done Hi. that day. I just, I did not want to go back in the woods. I had no desire to run another loop and I just called it, uh, yeah. the year after that, I did go up and finish the 60 K. But what? I was mentally prepared and knew what I was getting into. Yeah, that that yeah. race is really hot. I've done a I've tough finished. race for yeah, for, I, for context. It starts at seven p.m. Yeah, in just outside of Austin, Texas, in July. In July, yeah, like right. mid July, and it's it's and it's very uh, what they call it. It has a lot of canopy. And it so, has a lot of tree canopy, so the humidity and the heat just stays in there. And it's you know you're out by the river when it starts. And there's a breeze yeah. and it feels great. It's good and when you're you coming that, home. Yeah. <laughs> you make that first turn and you get into the woods and it's just like, wow, it's a sauna in here. It is a sauna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can be a, yeah. I mean, I've, I've thrown up through that one, but you know, managed to get through it, but it's, that's a tough course. Yeah. Just, the time of year, time of year. I mean, all the, year. yeah. You know, the one that, that I always one have trouble with, the one that I always have had trouble finishing um, is the Pedernales. 30 K um, only in that it's the first summer race. And so mm -hmm. I'm not used to running in the heat yet. And so I remember the first time I did the, the 30 K out there, I was driving up from the Valley with some friends and uh, they were talking about people um, throwing up at hell's Hills doing the 50 miler. And, you know, I think that might've been when hell's Hills was a little bit later in April and okay. so hotter. And they said, you know, people were throwing up and I'm like, why would people throw up at a race? And of course, you know, a few hours later, guess who's puking her guts out on the side of the, 
trail and I got within five miles of the finish line and I sat down at the, at the um, aid station and I was just like, I can't do this. And, but I didn't turn in my chip yet. And this, a uh, couple of friends of mine went by and they were just hiking the, the last five miles. And I was like, okay, I'll, they're like, just come hang with us. And I'm like, okay. And I swear to God, it felt like they were running like a six minute mile or something. <laughs> so I turned around and just headed right back in the, to the aid station. And they're like, weren't you just here? I'm like, yeah, I know I need to quit, you know? And so they wow. threw, threw my set. Well, there's one guy who was like cramping so bad. He was like lying on the trail, just trying to not cramp, you know? And this other girl could not stop throwing up. They threw our sad carcasses in the back of somebody's truck and, you know, took us back. But, and I was so delirious that instead of giving the guy my um, chip, what did I give him? I gave him my headlamp. <laughs> <laughs> And it was, I think it was Carlos, that one guy that works with Kyle, and, and he did, he doesn't have a very good, um, I shouldn't say he doesn't have a sense of humor, but he's kind of serious. And so yeah. he's like, this is a headlamp. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> well, yeah, it's also the middle of the night by that point, right? I mean, yes, yes. remember these races start in the evening. You've been awake all day long. And, 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 and we were driving five hours. So yeah. Yeah. And, and now you're about to run an ultra. Well, it was so or tra a trail race, whatever the distance you bite off that day, but into the wee hours of the morning. I know. And I remember we yeah. all went to Whataburger in probably Marble Falls, I think, after that, because, yeah, there's yeah, there's, nearby. there's nothing in Johnson City. So, yeah, we're up there and uh, <laughs> these people were looking at me in the line. It's like two o'clock in the morning, you know, and everybody else, my friends are all clean because they'd showered and everything and I'm still covered in dirt and everything. I'm, yeah. <laughs> like what have you been doing all night <laughs> it was pretty funny anyway god enough about me um behaving ourselves you know uh testing our limits and and learning a lot about what were you people that's, doing you were just out yeah. drinking beer all night right yeah <laughs> exactly there's that's the difference well, sometimes i have these existential moments though when i'm especially out of colorado been doing the 30k i haven't done it for a few years i'm thinking about it this year but um you know, I'll, I'll get out there and it's just like, you know, you're by yourself, it's dark, it's late, and you're just looking up at the sky going, what the world are my friends that don't run? What are they doing tonight? They're probably sitting on the couch watching Netflix, you know, and I'm like, right. what is wrong with me? <laughs> but then you finish and then you're like, yeah, that was kind of cool. <laughs> Especially because you're out there at night and that's, those, those, those. trail runs uh, are far enough out of Austin that when you do turn your headlamp up and off and, and look up, the stars are are pretty good out there. Yes, especially yeah. Colorado Bend. I, I particularly like that race. I mean, it's it's hell it's it's hellish. I call it Satan's driveway. But um, you know, because there's that one two mile section like by Gorman Falls. It's just like these tombstone, oh, yeah. you know, rocks out there. And you, I mean, yeah, of course there's people who can run through it, but not me. You know, I mean, I can barely walk through it without falling over. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty technical through there. It's very technical. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, what are you going to do? It's, it's a challenge and, you know, I haven't died out there. So there you go. And, and I'm going to do Tanahas in a, a couple of weeks. And, and so, uh, just doing the 10 K, but I've never run out there during the daytime. So I'm excited to actually see what it looks like. <laughs> That'll be cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll be out there, um, helping out with the timing. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, I'll see yep. you. Then. So that's awesome. So, um, goals for this year what do you what do you think you're gonna you're shooting for oh, i have three big events on the calendar okay and uh the first one is why i really should be running a whole lot more <laughs> um i i am signed and and also why i did what i did at bandera was the back-to-back -back days which i don't need back-to-back -back days for this race but it's 84 miles in the north georgia mountains with 16,000 feet of elevation called the Georgia death race. I've heard of that. I know people. Who yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that one. It's when been a goal that? for a couple of, it's been a goal since probably 2017 when I first, when I first learned about it and knew some people that were running it. Yeah. So March, March 30th is the date on that one. Yes. Yeah, so you might want to practice. That. Right. So, I mean the, the fitness, I keep a lot of the fitness with the bike, but I should be running a whole lot more. I should be probably well, you're doing you know, Rocky too. So that'll be okay. Yeah. That's, that's part plan. of it. It was all part of the training plan. Yeah. And then what else? Uh, so then I have two big gravel bike events 
um, over the summer. The first one is Unbound XL. It's up in Emporia, Kansas. Wow. Uh, previously, I've gone up to Unbound and done the 200-mile gravel race. And last year, I did the 100-mile gravel race. And this year I decided, well, if I'm going to go up there, I'm going to spend all weekend on the bike. And I signed up for the 350 mile gravel race. <laughs> so I have 36 hours to complete that. I'm Whoa. kind of attacking it and comparing it to running a hundred miles. That's yeah. it's going to be about the same time frame, you know, with the cutoff. Uh, so just to be able to wrap my mind around what nutrition and, and what the day looks like being on the bike for that long. Man, that's so, that's not, that's admirable. Okay, and then upon completion, first... that'll be my longest bike ride ever. Uh, right now, uh, last year I did 207 miles on the road, uh, not on gravel. So we'll see. Ooh, that sounds tough. Yeah, what? But it's yeah. a good goal. It's a fun goal. I mean, well, yeah, it'll be a neat one. Um, you <laughs> know, good story. I, I do, th I do think that there will be times where I'm going to want to take a nap, and wherever that winds up happening. But there's, you know, 36 hours to complete and riding a bike is i i think there's a lot more inherent danger than running uh if i were to fall asleep while i was on the bicycle so yeah uh, and i don't have a pacer available right i can maybe team up with somebody who is also in the race yeah and and see if you're riding next to somebody or you know you've got an accountability partner there with you but otherwise you know it's it's you against this challenge right right so, okay. so it's what's yep. goal number three uh, and the other, the other one is a 240 mile gravel bike race uh, across Minnesota. It's called the Dam Day Across Minnesota. It actually starts at midnight, and you have to finish by midnight the next night. So whoa, that sounds fun. You start on the border of Minnesota in South Dakota, and you ride clear across the state on gravel roads. And how much time do you get for that? It's 24 hours. Yeah, oh, it's, it's so it's hours. a it's a midnight to midnight. Oh right. yeah, I guess if I could do math. I yeah. <laughs> uh yeah so that one's just gonna be neat they they brought it back this year uh the last year they did it was two years ago and i didn't know that i didn't you know i didn't ever expect to see it come back but they've revived the event which is pretty exciting and i signed up immediately because it, it was something i wanted to do mm -hmm. um but yeah since it's back i now i get to do it so that is super super cool and uh when is that one that is in august Oh, okay. That's still be, well, <laughs> the, I mean, in, I'm from the mid, yeah, you, yeah. You know. in Minnesota, it should be all right. Yeah. Hopefully. yeah. <laughs> and what's, what about the one in Kansas? When is that? That uh, is the 31st of May and the 1st of June. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. Well, those are exciting goals. So I'll be definitely keeping an eye on you for that and uh, whatnot. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I really appreciate you taking almost an hour to talk to me. <laughs> no problem, Donna. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I've been wanting to do this, you know, for a while and I just am finally getting my scheduling all figured out. A lot of times I'm just lazy and I don't schedule people. <laughs> so it's like, How many podcasts do you put out a year? Ideally, I should be putting out about 52, but sometimes, okay. sometimes I'll have weeks where I don't put out one just because I don't have a guest. I don't have anything going on. Or like a couple of weeks ago, it was just, I think it was when we had the freeze, you know, and uh -huh. school had started. Um, and I just had a lot of other stuff going on, um, you know, just personally. And so it's like, you know what? I just, you know, I wasn't running. So it was sort of like, I don't even talk about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. That or through, or through the holidays. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes I try to, you know, uh, get something on, you know, in the, in the, you know, what do you call it? The, on the back burner. <laughs> mm -hmm. but something uh, from the archives talk about a I thought about that, something too, like that. Yeah. yeah it was weird this is so weird though I, I don't know if you saw my post the other day um I really um I was thinking about this kid when I was at Bandera this year I will always think about him when I'm at Bandera but there's this 11 year old kid I met um about uh, eight years ago and we were okay. we were doing the 25k and um his his mom was doing like the 50k I think and his dad was doing the 25 and his brother and one of his best friends and he's like oh they're up the trail and this kid's all by himself and he's this little blonde guy and he looks at me and he's like I like your pace I'm gonna stay with you <laughs> <laughs> I was like wow I've just been picked up by an 11 year old this is fun that's how this sport works absolutely oh, so much fun yes and I but I um but I was just thinking about him wondering what he's up to and then his mom messaged me how weird is that? And said, wow, cool. 
Yeah. And he's now 19 and he is in the Marines. He's in basic training. And so, um, so I, she gave me his email and so I'm hoping I can, um, reconnect with him. I sent him this effusive email the other day. I know he's going to be really busy for a few months, you know, with basic training and everything, but I'll, I'll follow up with him in a little while. Yeah. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah. He is. He was such a great kid. It was like probably the best trail experience I've ever had. And I told him, I said, you know, cause I call people you meet on the trail, summer camp friends. And so he was, he was really grooving. He reminded me a lot of myself when I was that age, cause he's like real verbal and has a real good eye for detail and telling stories and everything. And, um, it was just really funny. And, uh, but he's like, you're the best summer camp friend ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've run into him a couple of times since then, two or three times since then. Um, the first time he didn't remember who I was, you know, and again, 11 year old kid, what's going to, you know, you know, right. I mean, in my old lady life, you know, it's like, this is a big deal, but you know, when you're a kid, you know, you meet adults or whatever, who cares, you know? But uh, yeah, but it's it, that was super cool. So I'm not really sure why I brought that. But anyway, yeah, that, that's so sometimes that I, you're going to get to interview that you're going to get to interview him, hopefully. Yeah, 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 definitely. And uh, probably should talk to his mom because she got the Tejas 400 a few years ago. So, oh, wow. She's pretty badass. Yeah. So that's and, cool. Yeah. And his dad did Rocky, I think, with very minimal training, <laughs> like the hundreds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but um, anyway, all right, I'm going to leave you be and enjoy your day um hang loose for just one quick second okay